Thanks to Bridge for sponsoring a portion of this video. It's probably one of my favorite times of year right now, new foldables. I know we're still in the early phases of what foldables are going to be, but every generation can't help but get excited. So this year with Samsung, we have the Z Fold 4 and the Z Flip 4. And I think for a lot of people, the wonder of foldables is starting to wear off. And now Samsung is left with like a prove it. Is there a value with this form factor? So I'm gonna take the flip and the fold, not do traditional versus, but determine whether or not this is kind of an S year or if Samsung has finally made the perfect foldable devices for everybody. Let's talk about it. So traditionally I start off these versus videos with a blind camera test, but since both of these phones basically treat photos more or less the same, I'm just gonna put up examples for you from both phones so you can see how they look. Uh, to my eye, these photos on each phone look great. Are they better than last year's? Subjectively, maybe. That's kind of a nebulous answer. Uh, they're a little punchier in the shadows and colors, which is a look I prefer. Some of you though, and you sure let me know in the comments, I uh, prefer a flatter, warmer, more sort of true to life photo, which last year's versions of these phones had. In fact, here are some pictures uh, of last year's phones compared to this year's. And as you can see, uh, Samsung did indeed return to their more like classic Samsung look of higher saturation that they've been known for. However, they did keep the slightly warmer tone from last year's processing. And I think this year with the Flip 4 and the Fold 4, they struck a nice balance between white balance uh, and vibrancy. That now puts these closer to the photos that are coming out of their Ultra line. And when I say coming out of the Ultra line, I'm talking just software wise. Hardware wise, it's still like the plus line. And that is probably one of my biggest gripes with the Z Fold 4. For depending on when you buy it or how much, around 1800 bucks, that is clearly flagship phone prices. And I think for that price, you should get the best camera hardware that Samsung has. And that would be the camera hardware that is on the Ultra. Now, that's not a knock on what's here. Again, what we've got is essentially the camera hardware from the S22 Plus line, but I still believe it should be the best that Samsung uh, has to offer. The camera hardware is still generally the same between the flip and the fold, aside from the three times telephoto uh, that's only on the Z Fold 4. Uh, if you're like me and love the zoom, then you're going to want to go for the fold. The flip will have digital zoom up to 10X and the fold's got it to 30, but honestly those get to be like Picasso looking oil paintings. They're usable, uh, but not great. So I think that like, the main thing that I can say about cameras and photos on these phones uh, compared to last year's is the photos on this current generation, like feel current generation. Uh, last year's foldables were using hardware that was essentially one generation behind. Samsung has definitely fixed that while the difference in the photos might feel small, I think overall I'd be much happier with these newer versions if you were someone who sort of holds onto these phones uh, for two or three years. The Flip 4, the Fold 4's photos, I think will age a lot better than the Flip 3 and the Fold 3's will. A uh, video on both of these devices is on par with the S22 Ultra, the help of that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Uh, Samsung and Android really as a whole, I think, has been stepping up their game. The last figure is the video, and I love to see it. That was a big knock on Android devices years ago. No longer the case. The Fold does have the ability to film uh, at 8K24, one feature that's not on the flip. I don't use it often, but it is nice to have. But if you're looking to buy one of these phones, I think you expect the camera to be some version of good to great. And I think for the most part they are. But that's not why, at least I believe a lot of people are shelling out all the money uh, for these devices, especially on the fold side. And that's the design and what you get with that design. So one's a flippy boy, one's a foldy boy. Is one better than the other? To me, 100%, uh, but it depends on who you ask. And before we get into who I think each one is for, here's some updates that were made from the previous generation for both. Uh, the biggest change you're going to see uh, on these phones, something that's designed to be taken for granted, that's a hinge. Uh, on both phones, the hinges are a little more reinforced, a little stronger, and a little more reliable. And that's the most important part of what a folding phone should do, right? It's got to be what it was designed to do every single time without fear of breaking it. And the hinges feel a little harder to open and I kind of like that. It was a little bit more like reassurance with the devices. And sort of that confidence in the hinge, it was definitely not something we had in the first gen. 
We didn't know if the design was going to stay, if it was just a first gen thing, um, but it does appear that Samsung is leaning heavily into that original design of both phones and is working to perfect it and to solve the problems that went along with it and just kind of just refine the whole thing. I give Samsung credit here. Whether it was a brilliant decision or a stubborn decision, they stuck with that OG design for the most part and have just made it better. And I think after the first two generations of the Fold, I think it's shifting slowly from like an enthusiast device to a more consumer-oriented phone. And that's awesome uh, to see and to have, especially as somebody who loves the tech behind it. So on the flip, my knock on it is still the same knock I've had since Gen 1. Hoping the outside front screen would have been a little bit bigger. It does seem that Samsung has settled on that size. Uh, they have added though, to their credit, uh, more widgets and features that you can use on the screen. So it does feel more functional, uh, but the function is just not great for me. You can see who's calling, you can see some notifications, you can control you know, your Wi-Fi and some quick settings on there. I didn't find it overly useful. I wish it did a little bit more. Maybe the whole outside uh, could be a screen, but it is what it is. And if I've ever seen a phone that needs redundant biometrics, uh, it is the Z Flip of any generation. First of all, when you open it, it would be awesome if there's some sort of facial recognition or even bring back the old what iris scanning they had on the S9 to be a perfect opportunity as you open this phone and start scanning your face and then unlock. Now the fingerprint reader on the right does work well, but if you're left-handed, I can imagine that can be a problem for you. There's no fingerprint reader in the screen uh, either, so you're left with sort of one method of biometrics, or I guess technically two if you want to use a very, very, very not secure sort of photo recognition they can use uh, on that front-facing camera. I still think that's a miss uh, for Samsung on both these foldable devices. On the fold side, the outside screen did get little update, and by little I mean three millimeters. Uh, it's that much wider due to the shrinking bezels. Not a huge difference, but I think it's one that I think actually did make a decent difference in actual usage. That outside screen also has stronger Gorilla Glass, so a bit more durability if you're going to be very, very brave and venture out with that case. I'm gonna take a break from things that flip and fold uh, to talk about something, well, I guess also uh, flips and folds. Uh, I've been talking about the Surface line of laptops for a while. They are my go-to computers in the Windows world. Uh, and the latest is the Surface Pro 8. It's an amazing machine, we talked about it, you know about it. But one thing I think that it's missing is a really good keyboard option. Now, Microsoft is happy to sell you one that does a decent job, but it's not perfect. Bridge has built the perfect keyboard for the Surface Pro 8, but it does more to just give you a great surface to type on, which it does. Uh, it also gives you antimicrobial protection. It also gives you a place to put your pen. It also give you a one year warranty, which in all fairness, you may not need considering how like beefed up and tough this thing is. It'll keep your Surface Pro 8 well protected, but the warranty is at least nice to have. It gives you amazing key travel. It gives you great trackpad support and there's no pairing needed at all with Secure Connect. Drop this thing in and you're done. My favorite thing about it is that it actually angles itself up a little bit like a traditional laptop when you type so you don't have any wrist issues. And then if you want, undock it and use it as a tablet. So you're getting tablet when you want it, laptop when you need it, bridge the name and reputation you know will deliver a quality product. If you are using a Surface Pro 8, you've been debating getting one, you've got to check out the Bridge SP Max Plus. <laughs> So where the, where the magic happens for both uh, is when you open the screens. So the screens this year look and feel really good, as you'd expect. They're Samsung screens, they always look good. The protective film uh, on each, which just so you're aware, should not be removed as we learned with the Gen 1 Flip. It actually feels like a screen instead of a soft kind of greasy mess uh, like previous years. It's more refined, like the phone itself. Uh, the crease in the middle doesn't feel any smoother or any less greasy, but I've noticed it less and less as the years have gone on. And I know that's a big knock on people. You can see the crease. Personally, since I have a screen that's folding, I can easily look past it. I don't notice it after a few hours, but if you care about a crease, then don't buy a phone with a crease. Uh, but if you're on the fence, I do think you probably won't notice it uh, after a short period of time. Something I did notice on the Fold was a new taskbar that's built into Android 12L that has been awesome for multitasking. When you open the phone up like a book, uh, there's icons that shrink to the bottom like a dock, kind of giving you more space on this giant screen to do what it is designed to do. It's easy to customize and access recently used apps. You can access all your apps too if you want. 
uh, on the left side, you still have navigation buttons there as well. Again, this device and the execution feels way more mature. And I think part of this maturity comes from not just the hardware, but the software as well. So Android 12L, and I imagine 13 will come eventually, uh, has been a welcome addition for these larger screen phones. It's on Android tablets for almost a year, but it feels designed for these foldables. And again, things like the taskbar have been great for multitasking and features like apps automatically adapting and scaling when the phone is sort of bent in kind of tabletop mode and half open uh, is awesome, especially for video calls. Not every app is gonna be supported, but the ones that do work great and hopefully more will come uh, over time. The other knock some people have on the Fold is the underscreen camera on the big foldable display. It doesn't look great. Here's some samples from it. As you can see, it's not awesome. Uh, but that's mostly used for video calls. You can use the other screens for selfies and pictures due to the nature of the foldable. I think it's still cool that it's there to have a camera built under a display. Again, it's still not great, but for video calls, it works absolutely perfect. Foldables to me still feel cutting edge and I still have that wonder, especially on the fold side. Being able to open something on that outer screen and then open up the phone and have it automatically be on a larger kind of mini tablet display is incredible. It's a really cool use of tech. Now, neither of these phones are necessary for anybody, uh, but they do add something. You're adding a bigger screen. You're adding a smaller form factor that can go into a pocket or a purse more easily. That's really cool. Are they worth the premium price? Probably not if you're going based on a sheer rational decision, but the emotional side of me loves these things. And a lot of people really love the flip for the form factor. I'm not a flip guy. I feel like I'm a fold purist. I just love having that giant screen. It's really new. On the flip, when you open it up, you have a pretty just skinny, typical candy bar style foam. But on the fold, you get two form factors in one. And for me, I absolutely love that. So I'm always the guy that goes for the fold, but I know a lot of people out there love flip. So at least now you have a choice. If you want something foldable, do you want the different form factors or do you want just a smaller one you can put easily in your pocket? So all that stuff aside, I think battery could make a decision easier for you. Uh, so the fold has the same 4,400 milliamp hour battery as last year. And I feel like battery life on that was fine. Uh, this year though, with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the battery should have been a little bit better with how efficient that chip is. Uh, for the Fold, it seemed almost exactly the same for me here. The battery life improvements did show up though, or in the flip. They increased the actual capacity. It's 3,700 milliamps up from 3,300 last year. And again, when you pair that with the 8 Plus Gen 1 inside, there are gigantic battery life improvements. Now, if you're a heavy user, you're gonna wanna obviously have to charge every day. Uh, both devices do offer fast charging. You get up to 50% charge less than 30 minutes. That's awesome. A moral is your battery life is not really a concern anymore. What could be a concern uh, is price. Now the flip starts, and it's crazy to say this, a more affordable $1,000. Uh, the fold though is $1,800. And I think that is a gigantic barrier to entry. Now to Samsung's credit, they have awesome trade-ins and those prices generally can come way, way, way down. But at retail, the flip is certainly the same price as most uh, flagship candy bar, so that's an easier pill to swallow. 1800 bucks though, you gotta really want that form factor. And for $1,800 to still not have the flagship cameras on the back, to not have redundant biometrics, there's still a lot of areas I can see that could be improved for Gen 5. But having said all that, I'm still someone that likes to sort of live on the bleeding edge. And for me, nothing represents that bleeding edge more than devices that fold. Neither of these are phones for everybody. But you know who you are if you want one of these, and chances are you've probably already ordered. And if you are in that camp, you'll get a device that is more refined than the last generation, more capable than the last generation, and gets us one step closer to the foldable promise.